we have a teacher shortage. I don't know how long it's going to last, but I will say that these are scary times. If we don't have qualified, academically trained adults teaching the next generation, then what we may see is an increase in criminalization for the upcoming youth as they are not being equipped with a base skill line for survival or to achieve a decent lifestyle. That's what leads to a lot of criminal activity and behavior. Austin ISD, for example, still has 300 positions unfilled, according to this news report. In August, AISD said it was still working to fill 206 teacher vacancies. That number has now increased to more than 300. Their schools are having to do leveling, pulling kids from one school to another to balance these unfulfilled positions. To me, it's odd because Austin, Texas is a city now known for its eco-friendliness and high-tech implementation with many tech startups planting their flag in the city once known to simply keep Austin weird. If anyone were to browse the comment section on any Facebook post about educational news, a key frustration constantly voiced is that money is merely being thrown around real problems rather than addressing them directly. And quite frankly, it is annoying. Teachers just need more money. Yes, teachers need a reasonable wage, but I know people who are willing to accept less if it means being able to work with a student body that doesn't act crazy, willing to learn, and teachers having a peace of mind that accountability will take place appropriately. But alas, there are little things that grow into a big nuisance eventually becoming a media dumpster fire that plagues social media news feeds. In this video, I want to highlight what the most popular annoyances and complaints are that eventually pushes people to leave. Let's go. Shameless plug for a second. Last Minute Lessons reading the audio series for Teachers Pay Teachers. It's my own product line with timeless public domain classic stories such as Edgar Allan Poe's The Pit and the Pendulum or Hansel and Gretel with skill-based questions and reformatted text for easier reading. There are audio versions of the stories and questions as well as gamification that I plugged in through Kahoot! It. Check out the product line in the pinned comment section below. All right, number one. The first is not having control, freedom, or peace of mind to go to the restroom. Watch any Why I Left Teaching video on the interwebs and you'll find this annoyance thrown in as a serious inside joke. Restrooms mean not only a lot to students, but teachers as well. Yet, it is no laughing matter. If you teach elementary school, then I feel sorry for you as there is always a struggle for coverage anytime you have to tinkle. Going to the bathroom without worrying about students wrecking your room or being belligerent is a reasonable cause for concern, especially if you have the type of students that cause atomic destruction during your five minute absence, if you even get that. In middle school or high school, this may not be too much of an issue if you can manage to release between bell periods, but this also opens up opportunity for sneaky students to take advantage of your brief absence waiting outside of your classroom. Now, the most annoying thing is that students want restroom breaks in abundance while teachers struggle to just get one having to hold until either their conference period or lunchtime. My advice is to forego being that person trying to hit your H2O goal during your school hours. Majority of students value their precious restroom time while teachers simply can't go. Humorously, I often wonder if we project our bitterness onto students because of our lost opportunity, often denying them access to have little their little slice of heaven. All right, number two. Next on the list is requiring a good reason to request time off for personal business. Now, this depends on the attitude and ability to empathize with your superiors. I've been blessed to work with people where your personal business stays personal. You request time off, you don't need to provide a specific reason. You just need to plan it accordingly to the policy and guidelines set by your district or individual campus. For me, that's usually three days in advance. Personally, if I know I have something to do or weeks or months in advance, I go ahead and I just put it in the system. I try to be understanding of our lack of substitutes and work with my campus rather than work against things in place. However, there are higher ups you have to provide an entire dissertation to before they decide whether it's a good reason or not. A few years ago, I remember listening to a podcast episode where a teacher had no choice but to begin a digital sales business because their principal denied them time off when their child was very ill. Tending to the needs of the schedule was more important than the needs of their own teacher body, their own employee. And it's occurrences such as this that become the straw to break the camel's back. Now, of course, this doesn't just happen in the school system, but in the corporate sector as well, where superiors think operations is more important than the livelihood of their employees. Despite any loyalty you show employers, 
Employers are always going to do what's in the best interest for the business at your expense, even if it means termination. Next is getting punished for being a good teacher. Punished for being a good teacher? What are you talking about? Believe it or not, this is a very real phenomenon that occurs almost passive aggressively. Such punishment may come in the form of assigning or behavior students to your classroom because you can handle it or you're good with kids. Or if your students score extremely well on their standardized tests, someone may have the audacity to tell you, great job. We're going to give you more of a challenge with the students from alternative school. Yay. It's things like this that cause people to quiet quit in teaching, doing the bare minimum until you get home and unwind with that sweet, sweet Moscato. While in other news, imbecile instructor is getting rewarded for poor classroom management and sinking his or her scores into the toilet. They offered this person an elective position, smaller class sizes with untiered, high-performing students, and a relocation to an A-rated campus because reasons of retraining. But this scenario doesn't just apply to teachers. It could be someone from downtown who has a pitiful reputation, but all of a sudden you heard that they were getting promoted to become head of a department. Make it make sense. Next, we all know this to be a boon in our society, but it's racial stereotyping. Surprisingly, there's a twist to this. Believe it or not, this goes for all races, but I'll be primarily speaking about black and white teachers. For example, being a white teacher, you can be immediately branded as not understanding the struggle, unrelatable, or delusional. Assuming that every white person has privilege is asinine to say the least, especially if they work in a predominantly black or minority demographic. Likewise, blacks still endure silly and, and I hate this term, microaggressions or discreet prejudices such as assuming we are randomly aggressive for no apparent reason or we'll steal something from you even after all the degrees and other academic achievements we've accomplished. Media and Hollywood portrayal to the black experience of old dog deleting Asian people in convenience stores or as sexually ravenous deviants will take precedence over the good we do all day long. All stereotypes are getting old, really old, but honestly, it's our responsibility to continue to push these unwarranted narratives through positive portrayals on both ends, regardless of how challenging it seems. For my favorite video game, as Alucard told Rick the Belmont in one of my best Castlevanias, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. If it seems the stereotypes are getting worse, it's only because people are resorting to a can't beat them, join them attitude. So then there's that. Next is teachers watching helplessly as belligerent, aggressive, and disrespectful students return to class with no visible consequence. How many times have you witnessed a student do something heinous such as physically assault another student only to return to class 20 minutes later hearing the excuse of, we talked to him or her and they need to be back in the classroom. You may be a bystander watching a delinquent profane another teacher who people forget is also human with emotions who may or may not have grown up harder than the kids in their supposedly horrible situation. This teacher may then decide to react unprofessionally as a result and is quietly excused from their active duties. Consequential actions are always swift and immediate on a wronging adult with very little opportunity for rehabilitation Unlike students who are provided a biblical number of forgiveness, 70 times 70, that is Jesus' number in what he said. Now, this isn't always the local administration's fault as their hands are tied with directors from up top to lower suspension numbers as much as possible or enforce some obscure policy that favors the actions and safety of students no matter uh, how terrible they may actually be. Teacher shortages are up because these issues with students are not being addressed appropriately. High behavioral students are becoming more empowered. They're smartening up to the lack of accountability, shrugging their shoulders and just asking, that's it? When laughable consequences are distributed. Sadly, these kids are even bold enough to lay hands on teachers unafraid of any sort of legal ramifications. If only most of us can dare to be so courageous. Next up at bat is telling the teacher that they are an adult and should know better in the midst of unruly students. There's a level of professionalism many adults expect to have on any job. In other career fields, coworkers are not aggressive or randomly confrontational user profanity against their colleagues. Yet, this is a reality almost daily at most campuses. Students gladly talk reckless to staff and teachers are expected to just take it because we are the adults and we are professional and we knew what, was, what we signed up for before we even enrolled in a job. 
as if teachers have magically become immune to emotional trauma. Developing a thick skin is not an innate or natural skill. Thick skin is developed when people are placed in dire situations that they need to survive, understanding the consequences of their reactions. Professionalism on the school side will be explaining to the incoming staff the kind of environment that exists in a school and offering not another academic training, but scenarios and simulations of what realistically goes on in any given workday. Not telling a single soul about the toxicity surrounding the atmosphere is like we're holding some shady secret from someone when you enter a romantic relationship with them only to feel like they lied to you because you weren't told the whole story. It's shameful. Next, students returning to class far too soon after the obvious expulsion event. Back in the day, kids used to box it out and receive that bad old three-day suspension with a chance of expulsion depending on the degree of the offense. Today, the youth fights only to re-enter the classroom in the name of conscious discipline or some other woo esoteric, there there pal behavior management being developed. As I referenced early, there's this overarching narrative about keeping kids in the classroom regardless of their actions. I'm not sure if this is fueled more so by funding as I've learned that kids in seats makes the world go round. Whatever the case is, you can see the life leave the teacher's body when a student who just made you a targeted op return to the classroom. It is highly underrated how this continues to raise the anxiety of educators who are not trained to handle hostile situations. Verbal abuse is not normal. People wouldn't tolerate it on any given day, but it's normalized in a school system where teachers are instructed to pick their battles. Soon you become numb to it over time, only to realize that your newly developed emotional hardness has spilled into your personal life, causing you to be cold to the people that matter to you the most. Though these seven things are pretty messed up, causing more people to head for greener pastures, it's not all doom and gloom. I strongly believe there is a bright side to education and I have seven contrasting reasons to show the actual benefits and advantages of being a teacher and why I'm personally still in education right here in this video.